Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we're going to talk about kettlebell basic competition jerk training program design. The kettlebell jerk is a fantastic exercise. It's a soul crushing, totally brutal exercise, which most people never get to in kettlebell training because it is extraordinarily hard and the programming is extremely long. Most people deviate into hard style because it's much easier to get more benefit in a shorter period of time. Think of hard style as the shorter, faster, easier version to get benefit from, and soft style as being the extremely, extremely long idea that you do after you've done a ton of hard style. Hard style is always focused on our maximum power output. So if you were to do jerk training, which is a push press where you drop underneath it. The same word applies to dumbbells and to barbells, but this is specific to uh, kettlebell training. Hard style, you would run an EMOM. Every minute on the minute, you would do X number of reps, change hands, finish it out, set it down and start over. The goal of that is for you to recover so that you can do more power in the next set. The goal is to maintain power output. In soft style, the goal is to not put the weight down and you'll be forced to adapt in some other way. Structurally, you'll learn to hold on to weights without putting them down and to mold your skeleton around it. Think soft style, you're moving your body around the bell. Think hard style, you're moving the bell around your body. Soft style is generally awful, and this is probably the most hardcore training that I can think of for the smallest amount of equipment in the smallest amount of space. Anybody can do soft style competition training almost anywhere as long as your ceiling height is high enough. That makes it very different from something like CrossFit where you have to have barbells, racks, and a floor you can drop barbells on. Because you're not dropping kettlebells, it tends to be easier to do in places that aren't gyms. Apartment buildings, barns, whatever. You're not dropping them so you're not making a lot of noise and you're not damaging anything by dropping stuff. We have two variables in this equation. We have our time under tension. How long are we gonna hold on? And we're maxing out right now at 10 minutes. Marathon guys go even longer than this and I don't know how they do it. They terrify me because they're pushing this into the 30 minute time range and the 60 minute time range. Just doing 10 minutes is brutal. Maybe someday I'll get to double jerk marathoning, but life is long, so never write anything off, but just know that that's really hard. We have our time frame. If you're doing single jerk, then you would change hands halfway through. Double jerk is the absolute worst because you don't get to change hands. You just have to hold on. There's no way out of double jerk training. It is pure vertical up and down power. It's psychotic. We have our time under tension and we have our reps per minute. Jerk training can go extremely fast because you're not doing the clean. If you were doing the clean, it would be long cycle or double long cycle. Double long cycle psychotic, but there is a bit more rest phase in it than in pure jerk training. Think that we're trying to get to 20 reps per minute. You have two places to rest in the jerk. You can either rest in the rack position or you can rest in overhead lockout. The best guys do their training by resting an overhead lockout so they get very good at learning to relax underneath the weight. That's really what I need to work on is double overhead lockout. That it requires you to have a lot of upper thoracic extension and mobility. I'm not super good at it from years of heavy club swinging. We're really good at wrapping our body around the club but that makes us less good at that double overhead position, which would make you good at jerk training. So if I want to do double jerk training, I have to figure out how to reopen my upper thoracic spine. And there are some very good ideas on how to do that. I just haven't done it because it hasn't been necessary for my training for the last 10 years. Think about this as a big chart, six reps per minute at three minutes, six reps per minute at four minutes, at five minutes, at six minutes. We should have, I think, 15 variables across the top and eight variables across the vertical axis. That should give us 120 workouts per weight that you're using. That's a lot. If you're doing that every day, five days a week, you would get in 20 workouts per month. And then to get to 120, you would be doing just this one chart for six months. And then the more weights you have, 
If you have 10 weights, you just wrote a five year program of where you would have something to do absolutely every day. The amount of training you can do with kettlebells is insane and massive and that will give you continued benefit five days a week for five years. Most people aren't that hardcore. That would be like a pure competition programming thing. But even if you got two years into that, you would be different forever. And that's kind of what we're always looking for. We are looking for exercise programs that create permanent athletic change. It changes the way your brain works. It changes the way your body works. It changes the way you breathe. That's all built into this type of training. You have this whiteboard chart for every weight that you have, and the more weights you have, the more times that you can repeat this. You do not have to complete all of one weight before going to another weight. Take our idea of light, medium, and heavy. Have three of these charts going at a time. The first chart should be filled out more than the other chart. So you would start your light chart and get through maybe this fraction of it before starting your medium chart and then they would start to roll into an ABC program. And this is just the simple way to do it. There are other ways to do it where you're using multiple weights each day to overtrain or undertrain, change your pace each day. That's why this is an extremely long idea. You can easily do competition programming for 10 years just by itself. The problem with that is over-specialization. People get extremely good at the jerk, but they get really bad at turning around or having asymmetrical foot load or doing throwing patterns. So I never have people do pure competition training because A, they're probably gonna quit because it's psychotically difficult to endure mentally through this type of training. But I would also like to take something like this and combine it with either mace training single arm club training or two-handed club training depending on how hard this is this is always a heavy day compared to other types of training the amount of load is just ungodly the amount of work capacity is ungodly you would use something like mace training or club training in order to do all the angles that competition training isn't doing think there are six degrees of freedom in athletic movement Barbell is heaving and pitching. It goes straight up and straight down. Competition kettlebell training does the same thing. It makes you really good at going straight up and straight down. It makes you not great at rotating. Although single arm kettlebell competition training does have anti-rotation in it, so it can solve most of those problems. But throwing in mace or club training would make this a nearly perfect 10 year strategy. It's a long strategy, but it's a worthwhile strategy. You do not have to do this idea, but you should know that this idea exists because you need to know that there is always, always, always more to do with a kettlebell. Get more training for the same equipment you have. Spend money once, train forever.